they were online a few minutes ago. Okay. Let me check something here. Okay. Um, I am going to start. Okay, now JNT Car Canada is coming online, so let me just wait a second for them to come online. I know they switched the room today. Ragati is coming online. Okay. I see. I'm assuming that you guys can hear me. Can somebody put it in the chat? If they cannot or they can. Okay. Great, I think we do have the quorum. We have about five, six, seven colleges, okay. Thank you, SVCW. Good morning, Andy. I like how a sweet CW student said, they all want to be so far away from the instructor, right? They want to give more space to the professor there. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, questions, comments? Uh, so today is pretty much, in a sense, if I look at the, if I look at the Word document, in unit six, we covered the general method applications, we covered TSP 01, least cost we covered last time. The only thing remaining is FIFO. And as I told you, FIFO indirectly we covered, but I will cover it formally anyway. Okay? Uh, today's class is going to be a short class from a lecture viewpoint. If I'm lucky, I can finish it in 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Uh, the rest of the time, I think uh, you have to you have to work on some of the problems. Okay, let me mute some of you guys. I'm getting I'm getting static. Okay, Pragati, I'm muting you. I'm getting static. Okay. Um. I almost cancelled the class today, but since it's a short class, I thought let me let me finish it anyway. Um, okay. Somebody asked a question here before I say why for finding bounding heuristic. Can we apply any algorithm? Yeah, by default, all these things are heuristics, right? I think in one of the examples that we covered in the class, I don't remember which one. One heuristic, we actually, uh, our candidate solution turned out to be pretty good lower bound, right? Uh, I think it was a traveling salesman problem in Kuntana. Whereas in another heuristic where we selected some other candidate solution, it turned out to be not a great lower bound. We found something lower than that. Heuristics are heuristics, right? Those are just best guesses. So how do you come up with the best guesses? The way... Most often the best guesses are based on, as we say in common parlance, right? Based on your knowledge of the problem domain. Okay, you just know it type of a thing. So, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, the way, the moral of the story is, right? Other than, other than any small toy problems, all these things involve combination of heuristics, uh, branch and bound or divide and conquer or dynamic programming most of the complex problems use a combination of these things so uh, uh, any bomb bounding heuristic yeah you can you can apply any algorithm in general actually I didn't get into other details even the standard classification that we do of these problems like into divide and conquer, greedy, dynamic, and of course, black tacking, branch and bound. There's a big problem with this classification because 
uh, if you if you really go deep into it, if you see, they are all discussed at different levels of abstraction. Uh, students, if it goes over your head like a bouncer, uh, don't worry about it. Your faculty members know what I mean by that. See, what happens is when you are trying to compare these things, the abstraction levels are different. Uh, as the author Levitin points out, they actually have some slide deck somewhere. He says that there should be new ways of classifying these algorithms. Because it's not like comparing apples and oranges, right? Uh, so it's not an apples to apples comparison because the abstraction levels are different. One of the fundamental principles of modeling is the abstraction level has to be same to compare one thing over the other, right? Uh, so what I call it as when I take a data structures class like this, to me these are all like a bag of tricks. Like if I'm a plumber or a, or a handyman, handyman and say somebody who comes and repairs stuff around your house. I carry a toolkit, right, which has uh, screwdrivers, spanners, wrenches, different types of things. So I can one of those things depending on the problem that I'm trying to solve. So that is the way I view these things basically. Okay. Great. Um, so just to reiterate again, uh, after we are done with this, I've, al I've already started preparing the the review and cheat sheet for you for the final exam. So we'll have three classes next week. Uh, choose, uh, Tuesday your time and Thursday your time and Saturday your time. The Saturday would be, I, rec I asked for Kravatigara to schedule it for 12.30 p.m. your time or 1 p.m. your time. Whatever time he selects, I will, I'll be there. And the way we are going to do the review is every class is two hours, right? So that's three three classes is six hours. Uh, there are six units. On average, we'll take one hour per unit and then we'll review it. Okay? That's the way it's going to work out. Uh, today's class is going to be um, uh, short. Hardly any Hardly any slides. And I'm just going to make you uh, do some work in the class. Uh, and then I may even drop off. Uh, I almost canceled the class as I told you in the beginning. The reason I wanted to cancel the class is, uh, remember I talked to you guys about my my professor, Ram Murtiharu, my mentor, my PhD supervisor. So he just passed away this morning just two months shy of 90 years. So my mind is really not quite there in the class, but I will try to focus, okay? I think I told you to me, is my, I only have two role models, my dad and one is Professor Ram, no one else. So he's very near and dear to me. Okay, having said that, let me just get on with the lecture. Uh, and then uh, uh, we will try to do some examples and and then uh, and then wrap it up early today okay branch and bound so the only thing remaining is to talk about five four solution okay. uh, let's the way when you these classes right at different points of time by now you notice that I repeat uh, the material in different ways so that way you keep uh, understanding what these techniques are all about okay uh, there's a theory actually I don't know if I mentioned that to you or not uh, if you read something or review something 21 times you will never forget it okay if you read a book for example 21 times you will know paragraph by paragraph which page it comes things like that and obviously we'll not have time to do stuff 21 times but I do enough number of times where at least you'll remember half of it okay so so when you talk about a branch and bound it 
methods. First of all, used to find optimal solution. Okay. Optimal within reason. Okay. Because remember, when we talk about optimal, uh, we are not saying it is it we it is optimal within reason because as such the class of problems that we are trying to solve are NP hard problems. Okay. That means you need infinite time. Even if even if you have infinite time, you cannot solve them. So we you, we apply some heuristics, some shortcuts, things of that nature to come up to as close to an optimal solution as possible. Okay. Now, the second aspect of it is, by now you know we draw a lot of state, space, trees, right? What we are basically doing is we are enumerating all the candidate solutions. That's what the various branches are, right? Now in the process of doing that, what we do is we are discarding some subsets of the candidates, right? Parts of the branches of the tree. Right? And then how are we eliminating parts of the branches of the tree? We are using some lower bound and upper bound. Okay? And as we discussed in earlier classes, there is no magic trick to selecting this lower bound and upper bound. That in itself, in a way, is an art. It's not a science per se. Okay. The other slight difference is we we kind of eliminate sub branches, even like in backtracking, right? So in one way, you can think of branch and bound as the next refinement of backtracking. Okay. In backtracking, that's what what you're doing, right? You are creating a big uh, tree, state space tree, and then uh, you keep going down deep, depth first, right? And uh, if you come to a node where you say, hey, that will violate your constraints, then you backtrack. Okay. Um, but depth first, sometimes depending on how the data set is, uh, you, you could you could it could be an infinite uh, uh, loop so we refine it by putting some bounds so, and by doing a, typically a breadth first search whenever you talk about branch and bound in general you use breadth first search that means you traverse each of the children then for each of the children you go to the next level and traverse them and so on So when we talk about branch and bound, it's a state based search as I told you. We first take care of all the children of a node, we generate them before expanding any of its children. Okay. Talk about the second bullet already. In the last class and the previous class is some terminology, right? But here I kind of put it all together. Uh, we have this concept called a live node. That means we have generated the node, but we have not yet uh, uh, used the children, right? They have not been generated yet. Okay. We pluck one of the nodes for concentration from that live node set, okay? To evaluate that node, and that node would then become E node, okay? That means E is for explore, exploration, right? They are exploring, taking one of the live nodes and you are exploring it. That node is, is labeled as E node. That is the node in the state space tree that you are expanding. Remember, I made you draw some trees. Okay. What is a dead node? Dead node means there is no solution. By following that path, you encountered a dead end. So you are kind of backing, backtracking. So there is no need to expand that any further. Now branch, at, branch and bound is basically you're saying, hey, as you you have as you start considering, okay, and the children of an E node, right? Uh, before the node is considered, you finish exploring all, 
all the children with me. Okay. And once you finish exploring all the children, then you go pluck another live node from the live node list. Okay. So this is some terminology and let's see how we apply that, right? So a graphical illustration of how we apply that. So since we are talking about branch and bound, so if you're starting at let's say node one, these become your live node list, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, as you go through the process of building this tree, we talked about other, we talked about, for example, in the last class, we talked about least least cost, right? The different ways of expanding the nodes of the tree. Okay. What you see on the right are two ways of doing it. Okay. There are a lot of other ways, right? Least cost and things like that. So in the way of FIFO, that is what we are going to talk today, right? How this tree? Okay. Let's look at this one. So you have four children to one, two, three, four, five. They are named there because that's the order of exploration. Okay. Then you go to this uh, child here, two. Okay. Two becomes your E node. That means you are exploring node two. Exploring means you are expanding basically, right? So since you are expanding that, okay, then you get its children, six, seven. Okay? It is first in, first out. Five first stands for first in, first out. Okay? So it is a breadth first search. Children of Eno are in, inserted into a queue. In a queue. I mean, first in, first out means a queue. You know that, right? We all know. We call it in a, here, we call it line. Line in our queue mean the same thing. So this is the order in which you are going to explore the nodes. Pretty self explanatory from the graphic. Now, whereas, why we did that? Because after one, the next one in the queue was two. So you explore that. The next one in the queue after two is three. You explore that, like that. Uh, the opposite of FIFO is LIFO, right? Last in, first out. That's a standard concept in operating systems, and we use the concept of a stack, if you recall. Same thing is stated here, right? So here, in the queue, after one, you had two, three, four, and five. Five was the last one put there. So last one in was five. So you explore five first, six and seven. After five, you explore four, eight and nine, and so on. Now, for those of you, I do not know if you have done the compiler theory class, right? When you are compiling a program, uh, your professor would have told you, right, we build a stack inside the machine, you're actually building a stack. Whenever you have a, a let's say you have your main routine, right, in a C++ program, you call function F1. Then you follow it by function F2, F3, and so on. So whenever you're calling a function, the control is, is transferring from your main to that function, correct? When you finish executing your function, how does the system know that you have to come back to where you left off? Anyone knows the answer to that question? So you have a main and then you have written function 1, function 2, you made a function call. I mean, when I say function, I'm using it, okay? It could be like a method. In, in C++, we talk about method. Now, so the, that object is invoked and that method is executed. Now you are coming back to the next line of code. How is that happening? It is basically using a, a stack. The compiler is using a stack and it is using a LIFO algorithm there. So it stores the address of, of that method one. Let me call it function one. Let's call it function one. Within function one, Let's say you make a call to function 3. That return address goes on top of the function 1 address. 
So that is how it is. It knows when to return the control to the calling routine. Just one example, like four. So here is the general method, uh, which we kind of talked about earlier, but re, 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 uh, reviewing it or restating it in slightly different words. Okay. So you can use it with first search or first search in branch and bound. Okay. Now when you do a breadth first search, it is a FIFO search, okay, in terms of the live nodes. And when you do a depth first search, it's a LIFO search in terms of the live nodes. Big difference between a FIFO and a LIFO, okay. And just like in backtracking, we'll use some bounding functions. And the reason why we want to use the bounding functions is to avoid generation of all the additional subtrees, right? Because if you avoid them, that means you're saving computation time. Okay? Now, we are going to practice, right? We did some problems last class. We'll do some more problems this class to nail down these concepts. Okay? Why did I put this? Do you recall we did this example last class, right? This was the example that we did when we talked about the least cost. And then I defined, okay, you wrote something. In backtracking, we need to check the condition whether to go further or not. Absolutely right. That's what you're doing, right? You're looking at the constraint. How is how is it different from from, from branch and bound? Uh, good question. So. We kind of covered it last class, but I'll state it again. Branch and bound is really an extension of backtracking. First of all, we need to understand that. Concept of state spaces, right? We build a tree and we traverse a tree, all right? Now, the one major difference between the two, I gave a couple of differences. There's a table there, you can take a look at it. One major difference is in, backtra in, in backtracking, it is always a depth first search. That is by definition, in backtracking, it's a depth first. Whereas in branch and bound, that is not the case. Most often you do breadth first search, okay? Uh, um, nothing prevents you from doing depth first. That is the reason why we use uh, both breadth first as well as DFS. Just a further refinement of 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 uh, backtracking. That's all it is. Okay. Okay. Now, going back to the example. Good question. Is we considered this example of tiles, right? And and then remember we were talking about uh, doing uh, branch and bound in the context of that we did that, right? And then the specific example that we took was the cost for how do you expand the tree it's associated in moving tile right so in this case if you look at the left sub tree here uh, remember there was a mistake here that uh, the chakravarti garu pointed out right this is not one plus four it was one plus three i think on the left side what did we do here we said four can go there what was our cost function? Cost of moving that and plus, remember GX plus HX, right? Uh, I don't know which one is which. What that GX plus HX is, cost of moving the tile is one aspect. The second one is after you move it, how many, how many tiles are out of place? That was the second cost function. So you add those two. So how do we get this one here? You have one, two, three, five, six, four. So we moved one. One is because you're moving one one slot into the tile, okay? So four can move there, okay? And, and the, after four is moved, how many tiles are out of order here? Okay. So we build this one, 
And then, I don't know if I put the next slide here from the last class, let me check. Then we decided that we are going to take the lowest cost, which is this one in the middle branch. One, two, three, five, space, six, seven, four. One, two, three, five, space, six, seven, eight, four. And we decided we are going to expand that. So once again, the same rule is applied here. Which of the candidate sets you can move into that, right? Once you move into that, you know the cost. Okay. Okay. Voice is still not clear. Uh, uh, it is said by Pragati. Let me put here. Can you hear me? If everyone is complaining, then I'll have to dial back in. Now, perfect, okay. Jane to Kakinar is saying perfect and Pragatiti is saying perfect, okay, good. Okay. So that is the, so there is, what I'm, all I'm doing there is, right, uh, I have an initial state, I know my final state, and then uh, I'm using the concept basically saying live nodes. explore right e e node as we call it okay. so we'll do some more examples that and then you will actually get to work in the class today some of these things and hopefully they'll become much clearer okay. so we we basically did explore the node and then we continue that branch so i just copy pasted those slides here so that we know what we did okay. now when when we are learning these things right the you you when you ask me a question okay, what is the difference between background versus backtracking right uh, that's a classic question every student to learn data structures has to have that question otherwise they are not learning right they kind of look the same, but they are slightly different. Okay, one big difference when somebody asks you that, you can say, "Hey, backtracking is always depth first, first and foremost." Period. Okay. And whereas in a, a branch and bound, it could be both. It could be breadth first as well as depth first. Typically, we use breadth first. Typically, most of the time. I'm not saying all the time. Most of the time. Okay. The algorithm uh, would be computationally, which one would be a better? See, ultimately it boils down to computationally, time complexity. All this course is about time co complexity, right? Computationally, which one is going to give us a better solution? I think that is probably the right question, right? Instead of saying simply the difference between the two, which one would give us the better time complexity? Okay. Um, I think we said in the table, time complexity wise, uh, most often B and B gives you a better solution because you are exploring, you are not going deep into the tree. Most often the solution lies close to the root. So if the solution lies close to deep, you will arrive at a solution faster. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of uh, mathematical proofs and all that to prove that. But having said that, it is not the case that B and B wins all the time. There are cases where depth first search is, is a better tool, which you will, which we will uh, uh, discover or identify at the end of this exercise. Okay. So what is this exercise about? Remember, we solved the four queens problem, right? Earlier, when we did the backtracking. We considered four queens. I showed you a bunch of slides. We will revisit that slide again shortly. But how do we do the four queens problem in first in, first out? Okay. So here is the algorithm for that. Remember, the moment we talk about this P and B, we need to apply the concept of live node, E node, dead node. Correct? So, initially there is only one live node, 
One live node is a chess board actually. There is nothing. It's like the starting point, right? Nothing has been placed on the chess board yet. Okay? Now, second step. Second step is expand and generate all its children. Okay? In your hand. Okay? So, the queen can be placed in column 1, 2, 3 and 4. You agree? Okay. So how would the picture look like if I were to draw a picture here? Let's see that. By the way, I don't have a canned dancer here. I'm going to do it along with you here. Okay. At least the first step. Let me... Let me, I'm here. Let me just do a insert new node. New slide. Okay, I'm inserting a new slide. So, you should be able to... So, I said initially you have a chessboard, right? So, instead of drawing a chessboard, what I'll do is, we already know the chessboard, how it looks like. I don't need a bullet here. Let me take away a bullet. Uh, what did I do here? I want to get a text box, right? Why am I not... Give me a second, let me remove this on the text box, okay? So, I can, my starting position, I don't know what I can say, I can say zero, like that maybe, so traditional starting position, right? So, the children in the chessboard are... This is the tricky part, right? How to determine the children, right? So what are we saying here? The queen can be uh, uh, it's a 4 by 4, right? So uh, to show that it can be in 1-1 one, one, meaning row I can do something like this, right? Faculty members, you are welcome to help me out there if I'm making a mistake. One, three. One, four. What am I writing there? What am I depicting there? Can somebody tell me? One, comma, four. These are the children, right? Because you have to start at some point. Why am I saying children are one, 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 two, one, three, one, four? Because you have the you have the first row, correct? Four by four. Four by four. Okay, that's your four by four table. Square like a jetam, just board square count and the close enough, right? For some reason, today I could not change the colors of that. Let me see if I can make them all white. I don't know, for some reason, I couldn't change the color. Let's see if I can change this one. Let me try that. Okay. Is it fill color or is it some other color? I'll try one more time. If I can't change the color, it's not changing because it's white, black, white, black, white, black. So technically, I should say this one should be uh, black. Black indolet delid. Okay. I'm not able to change the colors properly, but you get the idea, right? So this is the first row. So the children can be. The child is the queen here. Hold on one second, I have to open the door. Okay, I had a very high. Okay, great. So, Queen can be placed.
placed first row, first column. Not, these are all candidates are nothing but uh, these are nothing but the candidate solutions, right? That's what it is. The other solution is first row, second column, and like that. Okay. Now traditionally we place it here, right? That is your queen there. Now, once you place the queen, then you explore the, it's a breadth first search, right? You have to explore the possibilities, okay? Now, this. One, four are your live nodes, okay? Now, you are selecting one of the live nodes. Now, that, that becomes your E node. E node means you are going to expand that node, okay? requires a little bit of practice okay it's not easy i know some of you some young ladies are smiling there i don't know whether they understand it or they are thinking that they are giving up or i don't know what that smile means okay but i hope you are understanding it so this is your live notes that's how we define right if you go back to a few slides before somewhere here i defined live notes right i gave you the terminology For none of those live nodes, we generated children. Okay. So now you are going to select an E node out of that set of live nodes, and then you will start exploring that node. That's exactly what I have done here, right? So now I am going to start exploring that. So when I start exploring that, that means I am going to place my next queen underneath that right where can i place it can i place it in two one would this tree kind of go to uh, row two column one row two column two four correct now once you do that now one you whatever things that you put here right if i can write here for a second uh, one more time i have to I guess select this text box here would be row 2 column 1 uh, row 2 column 2 row 2 column 3 row 2 column 4 okay so all these things sit under this one one right because that is what we are exploring these are the children now since these are the children children yet not yet okay uh, let me write some more thing here for you this is your not a text box what I want to do is I want to put an arrow here so this entire thing this row of data is your uh, live notes to begin with Now, then what is your candidate node, E node? E node is this one. This just 2, 1 is your, uh, 1, 1 is your E node. Because you now consider that one. So, E node, I'm just writing here. First E node would be 1, comma 1. Okay. Now, so one that is gone, Let's remove it from here because it's no longer a live node, it's an E node. I don't know whether you remove it in the algorithm or you save it somewhere. I think you, I like to think that you are saving it somewhere. It may not be there in the live node list or since it's a queue, you would have moved the queue pointer. Remember queues are, how do you keep track of queues? You have a pointer. You move the queue pointer to the next one after you, after you consider this as a live node. Add these things into your live node list if you're writing an algorithm. So your live node is continuing to expand and then you're taking one from the queue, first come first serve 
and then you start building the sub trees and if you reach a dead end let's say you can't put your queen there then you go back all that right whatever the algorithm is for five four here okay so that is the that's the way you build the should be there in the branch and bound. okay okay Found the notes that become dead. Okay, that is the algorithm there. Not easy, even though it's a simple problem. I'm 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 not trying to say it's super easy, right? You have to practice. Practice, practice, and practice. Okay? That is the only way. You ask your professor there in the class to build that for you live right now out of memory chances are almost all of us would fail okay because these are not the things that we memorize right we just have to practice practice and then you will get it okay, okay so that is the four queens with the branch and bound so i gave you the algorithm there and then you are actually going to build that tree how it looks like that is what the rest of the time Now, how would that compare with back? Just to refresh your memory, remember very conveniently today, JNT Kakinada asks backtracking versus uh, this one, right? Branch and bound. Here is a backtracking algorithm for the placing four queens. So we place it in the first row, then we move on to the next row, placing a queen on the first available square. We continue like that. The moment you get Either you can place all the four queens or you get stuck. So when you get stuck, you're tracking. So this is where when you get stuck, you are the problem that's all it is, right? So how would a tree look like here? Since I was nice to you, I'll come back to the slide in a second, okay? Since I was nice to you, I think I was in a good mood then when I taught that, that particular class. I gave you a nice picture there. Isn't this also a straight space tree? It is. Branch and bound also is a straight space tree. Both are trees. In both the cases, you are building trees. In the worst case, both the trees would be of the same size. Okay? Actually, actually it's not worst case. In the, in the, the, the combinations are there uh, I think we said something like if it's 4 by 4 you have 16 paths right 2 raised to 4 so you build a tree with 2 raised to 4 leaves the leaves would be 2 raised to 4 ok so you can see how that algorithm works here and how the tree looks like so you started off 0 is your initial point look at the queen here row 1 by 1 that's the first path now, if you let me expand it to see if you can see it better, okay? Better? Okay. Now, if you see how the node has been labeled, you take first. Remember, depth first. So, one shows that is what you do next. Now, once you get queen here, then you have the second branch here that is you try to place the queen where do you place the queen right you analyze based on the algorithm you know you're placing the queen here okay now once you place the queen here then you are continuing along the path here where do you place the queen one two three four can you place it anywhere afterwards that's what you're exploring once you cannot place it okay because there are no you be this three then you move the queen here well you have not verified whether this illustration is correct or wrong but you get the idea so you are always going deep first so once you explore all this depth here right your backtracking algorithm is basically taking you back here from one back to zero 
once it takes you back here then you have no choice to move the queen to the next square now once you move the queen to the next square you follow the same principle that we followed on the left subtree and this will become six this will become seven and this will become eight What did what did I want? What what do I want you want to show here? Is right? Can you draw your exercise? Basically, is to understand how to draw that state space tree Let me go back to normal. You, I give you the algorithm. I gave you an illustration as to how to draw it. Some kind of a uh, rough sketch I gave you how to draw it, right? Okay. Um, now your try to draw a state space tree using the concepts of live node, e node and showing me how the tree would look like okay um, just go about let, let's say uh, two three deep or maybe four deep because it's a it's a humongous tree right show me an illustration i'm not saying draw the full tree to draw the full tree you'll probably take the full day okay or maybe half a day or maybe two hours i don't know let's get some practice to draw a tree tree would look something like this okay right you put the queen here you followed all the way like that okay. if you apply the this algorithm see how the tree looks like okay not backtracking but this one Everyone understand the problem that we are trying to solve here? What we are trying to draw? If there anyone who does not understand, put it in chat and I'll explain it in different ways. Okay, so what I want to see in your work is uh, as you keep going step one, step two, step three. then as you go to the next step what is your live node list what is your e node okay there's only one e node that you consider at any given time so e node would always have just one one value okay so i want to see what your live node list is and what your e node is okay i think uh, it's fair to take about 15 to 20 minutes for this problem if not longer faculty members please help them out and then you have the examples okay uh, and the one that we are doing here is FIFO what you yeah it's FIFO it's not about least cost there there's no cost there right you can't even apply cost factor there it doesn't make sense say least cost okay. I'm assuming you're doing it you turn on your videos this might take you rest of the class time I'm not sure honestly do I have anything else to cover today which I wanted to cover no let me check yeah Okay, you're doing four queens problem using backtracking algorithm and branch and bound. How do we know which is better? I mean, ultimately, Jane to Kakner and they asked the question. Ultimately, that is what it boils down to. Which algorithm is better? 
after you exercise your neurons, brain brain neurons for a while, I'll answer that question. Okay. Uh, time now is for you 11, uh, 10, 10, 20, 11, 11, 30. is it 11, what is the time there now? Ten thirty and twelve, gada. So ten twenty and ten minutes to twelve. Okay, it's posted now. because I was I was uploading the screen is not visible because I was trying to upload something now I'll open up my file again when I have the file open when I'm uploading So manam, basically we are applying the log logarithm. Somebody asked me what is the next node, right? So live node is the node that has been generated but whose children have not yet been generated. So based on that definition, initially blank, okay? Once you generate the set of live nodes to begin with, we said, uh, the, and the way I'm generating live nodes is I'm saying, where can the queen be? Okay. Then you say one, two, two, one, three, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. Right? This one, two, right? So this is all, sorry. So one 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 two one three one four is my live node set to begin with. Okay. Now once I have the live node, one of them has to become the E node. So what I did was, out of that, I se I selected the E node as one one. Okay. Now as per the algorithm, we explore node one one first. So. I can place at 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. Correct? Now once I do 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, they are all candidates, right? Next, they, are, they become live nodes. They are not explored, but they will be put into the live node. So the live node is increasing. The live node set is always increasing like that. Okay? You are done with that. Once you are done with that, then what is the next E node after that? So you are done exploring one one. What would be the next E node? I mean, I am saying it correct. If I screw up, I'll correct it and let you know next time. I don't think I'm screwing up. I think I'm doing it right. So the next E node would be, what say, my little, there's one live node, queen, the only live node is E node. Expand and generate all its children. Children being a queen in column one, two, three, and four of row one. Okay. Next E node is the node with the queen, one, one. Expand this node and add possibilities, okay? So you, you are in that loop. I should actually give you the full algorithm programmatically also okay if you're in the loop then what happens the next e node but for search so then 
then you take a breath first then you do then you do one two one two the next e node is one two because it's five four remember right so this is your five four list one 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 two one three one four two one two 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 three two four then it becomes one two so when you become one two then what happens you are here right correct then this is one one this is one two one two is this one here right got it so then the children of one two are two one two 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 three two four okay like that you keep expanding so it's a, that's why i said don't do the full tree it's going to take forever right but as long as you know how the concept of live notes and e notes are expanding i actually have a picture of that i'm trying to see where i can find it bear with me while you're doing it okay if i can find the there is some confusion about this by the way this time complexities of some of these algorithms yeah n factorial for solving n queen problem you write a normal big algorithm the worst case is 4 raised to 4 i think we what what you use uh, uh in terms of an algorithm so let me see if i can i put this my hand out there ah ah jay ji log bachche ka computer science department ka ka ah computer science computer science some normal algorithm here yeah it is mega computer with some level of optimization because when you are configuring it our regular branch and bound that i gave you do Uh, did not optimize it just basically showed you to draw the entire state space tree there is some level of optimization all you are kind of getting into some some advanced things okay uh, but for the purpose of the exercise that i gave you i just wanted you to know how to come up with the live notes and then the candidate note the e note okay and uh, for a four queens problem basically you get a it, it's a lot of lot of combinations then okay uh, i think in one of the slides i gave you the exact number uh, if i can you can find it in the slide deck slide deck Uh, did anyone does anyone have anything to show anyone mm -hmm. okay anyone has any picture to show us how what would be the live note to begin with step number uh, like 
an E node to begin with and then step number second iteration what is the live node and third iteration what are the live nodes in the chat so that way we can all learn from you the live notes set after the first iteration I want somebody to put it there same thing applies to Jane to Kakinada I know you, you had some questions by the way this is a very legitimate exam question huh? showing live notes and showing e notes Okay, yeah, JNTV, JNTV Kakinana, they did not respond. Now let me ask SVCW. Professor Garmi, student. The other colleges are also trying to do it, not saying they don't. Pragati, Mandava. Okay. The problem key major. Uh, if somebody has a book by. <coughs> If any faculty member has a book by Sartaj Sahani, Dantlo, they have a very good illustration of how the tree looks like for this problem. Um, if I can get hold of that book, I'll try to do it tomorrow. Okay, so in summary, with respect to this chapter, okay, if we have to summarize this chapter, uh, what is this chapter about? This chapter is all about branch and bound, right? And, uh, it basically builds upon the chapter on back tracking, first and foremost. Okay? And then backtracking, what we do is we go deep. Uh, just parent node. From there you take another branch and go deep again. That is the fundamental philosophy behind backtracking. We talked about a maze problem. That is what the maze problem is. Okay. Uh, it could also be in a way. Uh, uh, of course, Queen's problem is always a backtracking method. And there are so many other ways we, we arrive at a solution using backtracking. And we predominantly use it when we don't. We have to make decisions, but we don't have all the data. See, if you have all the data in front of you. Without doing anything, you can make a decision, right? But keep going, going, you get stuck, you come back, back, back till you find another branch. Okay? Now, in contrast to that, in branch and bound, what we say is, yeah, that thing we can. We can create that big state space, meaning all possible solutions. The only thing is, instead of doing all possible solutions, you try to put a bound to it. The reason why you want to put a bound is, you don't want to explore all the way down. It's a waste of time. You go n level deep of a tree and then you get stuck. You just wasted n, uh, n steps of computation, right? The trick is to find a solution
getting unlikely. I'm not saying there's no solution that side. If you have infinite time, you can explore all the way depth first, right? But no one has infinite time. So you come up with some kind of a bounding techniques, lower bound and upper bound. Okay? It's your best guess. And then you eliminate the subtrees. If some if you're as you're exploring the tree, uh, if that node gives you a, a, a value which is greater than the upper bound, okay, then you eliminate that branch of the tree, go back up, then take the next candidate solution and repeat the algorithm. That is the main difference. started preparing I have a lot of cheat sheets like this uh, am I sharing this document do you see it I think I'm sharing this if I'm not mistaken let me check no I'm not sharing do you see it so I started preparing a, a, a kind of like notes cheats for you if a question comes, say, what is the difference between backtracking versus branch and bounce? Okay. Backtracking. Okay. So again, there's some answer there. Okay. Um, As you, same thing here, for example, what is the difference between brute force and backtracking? So when you are preparing for your final exam, these are the questions that you should be asking. Okay? Yes, I'll prepare a summary sheet for you, but you yourself should come up with a list of potential questions. Okay? When we do the review next week, right, I want every student in the class this how would it work what is an example of this right uh, if is a given example of backtracking given example of dynamic programming or any question that comes to mind I want each one of you not just a couple of them. I want each one of you and your faculty members are going to tell me whether you have done it or not. Each one of you should come up with a, at least a one page of uh, one to two pages of questions and uh, I'll also put another metric. The question should be at least uh, six chapters together, six units. If I say six units, if I apply the rule uh, seven plus or minus two. questions you understand the the assignment before you come to the next class faculty members do you understand what I am asking the students or do you have any you want me to give you more clarity on that I want students to come up with a total of at least 30 questions I'm saying at least not at most at least furthermore every unit they should come up with five questions what are legitimate things to be asked, to be uh, answered? So that makes it 30 questions. Okay, and then what we... members. We can all answer them together. That is the group collaborative learning, okay? There will be a lot of overlap between the questions, but try not to cheat. Because when the reason why we do that is, 
that is a, by the way that's a great exam technique that we use i don't know if they teach that in, if you learn that in uh, any of your classes either in college or intermediate right i think you would have learned it in intermediate right and when you go to those coaching centers they give you nothing but problems problems and problems they don't teach anything they just give you problems to solve same methodology here if you can list the questions by yours any more questions comments i thought i'll finish the class in one hour i looks like i took the full time okay faculty members do you have any questions at all and next week when we are reviewing uh, if any of the faculty members if they can volunteer to assist me to review any of the units uh, i know that you you are all uh, very passionate teachers uh, i have seen the passion of some of the teachers in this class too if you want to volunteer to review any of the units please let me know so that way when we review i'll tell them hey, this faculty member is going to review somebody has a good quote to put in the chat because my mind is on my professor here uh, i think i should i think he said something like this i think he said something like this always smile and have a beer so um He, he i told you he died short of 90 90 years old right very great man meaning you have to rush okay very nice so my professor i leave you with that thought right Uh, his favorite pastime is we used to i used to teach with him in berkeley okay uh, after the class we all used to go to pizza place there is a very famous pizza place there and then his favorite pastime is to spend time with with his students including me you and i teach with him um, enjoying a slice of pizza and lot of beer he always used to uh, drink lot of beer okay so just reminded of beer there okay great good luck Ma, don't miss the review session next week uh, into the classroom fair enough that is the challenge okay every student 30 questions one pager